Hey there! Before we start the video, I just have to thank you so much for all the support that my first video received. I'm so happy that a lot of you seem to be very excited about the future of the channel. That's why I have a very important announcement to make at the end of this video. Please stick around! Also, this video will contain some images related to esoteric stuff. I beg your discretion if you happen to be troubled by that. Please enjoy! Hello, I'm Rin, and I want to tell you something about me. Did you know that I'm a tarotist? I just have like 3 years practicing it, but I do love what I can do with it. For those who don't know what a tarotist is, I'm gonna briefly explain it to you. A tarotist is someone that, as the name suggests, can perform a tarot reading. That is an old practice that can manifest divinations and fortune telling through a special card deck that is capable to show the result by symbolism and figure association. This derivates from a skill called cartomancy that implies a certain method to unlock the potential for doing such readings. So does that mean that I'm sort of a magician or a spear? Uh, not actually, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but it's true that involves some mystical believing and manifestation by yourself such as faith and god worshipping. But in this video I'm not gonna dive deeper in the tarot as a whole, but if you want, you can always leave a comment asking for it. Instead, I'm going to talk about another curious case of cards that involves Perik Sekai. Well, you know that, like every other card in the game, tries to represent in some way the story that revolves around them. But in this case, it's in the way of tarot cards. I said before that tarot reading can tell us about divinations and fortune. We can also interpret them as a possible future or a destiny, depending on the reading, so this early on the video I'm going to say a very important statement. Some of those cards are not hermits. And that's very important, because I'm going to interpret them as a common reading to decipher the destiny and fortune of the Night Court group. And maybe we can learn even more about them. So, let's get rid of the obvious factors. In the tarot card deck, each card represents something very different. There are no cards with the same meaning, so whenever a lecture is interpreted, it's by looking the correlation and meanings of each card during the session. Personally, when those cards were out for the first time, I was hooked by the design of the group in general, with the ram horns and the winter team that adds this sense of mysteriousness and detour. By seeing the similarities in everyone's clothing, I can see why many of you call it as the hermit suit. Because in the cards of Mizuki and Enas reads that they are hermits, but not the same hermit. Mizuki has the reverse hermit, and Ena has the hermit searcher. In Tarot, the position of the cards of the reading also matters, because their meaning changed as its image, but bear with me, we'll discuss this later. Let's keep seeing the name on the cards like another one. Her card reads that she is the Hanged Girl, that it's an actual tarot card called the Hanged Man. In Mako's case, it's the scale of justice. Again, mirrors the justice card in tarot. Up to this point, everyone has something called the Major Arcana. That is a type of card that has more energy than the others. This means that the fortune and deviation pulled out from their meaning is more likely to happen. As their counterparts, the minor arcanas are several number cards with a certain categories attached to them, that their divination meaning relies more on the consultant's will. That is the case of Mafuyu's card, the Staff of Guidance, that is mirrored by the Ones card in the Tarot. There are several numbered cards that has the One trait. By looking for resemblances, I believe the closest one is the Page of Wands. So far we just covered the tip of the iceberg, the things that we already know and it's all settled down, right? Before I start talking about the meaning of each card in relation to the user, I want to insert a very mini theory in here. You see, I was so invested about the meaning behind the winter theme and the horn symbolism because I find them that they pull those traits out of nowhere. 
the tarot just shares like two cards that resembles this scenario and the harness, but outside of that, I want to understand why they choose winter, like snowy ambient and the goddamn horns. Like why? I know they all are so cute and amazing to look at it, but I find some relations with some other things that I thought it was worth to show it to you guys. For the winter team, I got the idea by looking the gacha banner itself, covering with the snow and a little trace of grass that can be interpreted that if you are not fast enough to chase that person you are looking for, the footsteps will be banished by the snowing, adding a sense of urgency and worrying. But the most outstanding things are the flowers that are on the side of the scenery. Doing a little bit of research, I discovered that holds a close resemble to the Paulonia Tormentosa, or a princess tree, and I find some of the meanings it has. In China, it's very common to plant those whenever a girl is born, and it's supposed to grow along with the girl, accompanying her whole life. In ancient legends says that a phoenix will rest on it if it's strong enough to symbolizing a reborn, and its flower appears in the Hanafuda card set of the cards of December. For the horns, I found two possible explanations. The first one is the relation it has with the devil horns in its iteration of the tarot cards. This card in particular means the self-deception, resentment, and anger towards ourselves and the others. Very fitting for a story based on a fight with our inner demons. The second explanation I find is about some relation with Moises from the Bible. More specifically, the Moises horns that is an omen for wisdom and authority. And now we can finally talk about the card's meaning for each member. I want to start talking about her first since her card is not as on the nose as the others. The Page of Wands is a card that is telling us about someone ambitious, energetic and very talented. These traits aren't related to Mafuyu herself, but rather to an idealized version of herself in a brighter future. A future where she is willing to do the best for herself and getting enough support from her surroundings. This card also means that the future might bring a new life phase due to a high inspiration stick in the shape of good news, referencing to Canada's songs for her hoping that someday she could be saved. On Meiko's case is the Justice card. This card holds the meaning of balance, equality and impartiality. It also holds a very close relation with the karma of the consultant, even though it can give you a concrete answer on the future ahead. It heavily implies that dignity and integrity on your own persona will remain with you at any time. It parallels Meiko's thoughts about getting off the weight to let it breathe the complex problems that each member of the unit has. Kanade has the Hangman card, and this card is pretty much interesting, because their meaning revolves around the perspective that each one of us have in order to see how life works and how we can move forward to our future. We can also say that since the Hangman sees the world upside down, he might have a completely different perspective than the others and he might see something that everyone is overseeing. That's mirrored by Canada's way to see each one of the members as friends, as equals, and as companions. Each one of those social labels represents a different way to see the same person. Anna has the Hermit Searcher. The common meaning of this card is about detachment from the bad experiences. Think it as a porch of your soul that has way too many spiteful omens. It also means solitude, introspection, and reflective feelings. This card represents a self-examination on a deeper meaning, to see your past experiences and analyze them in order to understand and progress without weight in your soul. Anna, as the searcher of this card, is conscious about her position as an artist, as a friend, and she needs to apply that knowledge of her previous experiences in order to understand Mizuki in their pain. Do you remember 
that I said that a card can change their meaning by the position on the lecture? Well, Mizuki's card is that case. First cards tend to inverse their energy flow, and by that, their meaning also gets inverted. Instead to be a hopeful card, it's more like a despair card, like a warning or call to action. The card holds the meaning of an unwelcome isolation and loneliness. It can be interpreted by taking the wrong timing for personal reflection. It can be that you take way too much or not enough. This alone makes the card to encourage the consultant to create more space to meditate and reflect to get deeper into their inner being. Mizuki is insecure about their past and fears that their night court friends might not accept them by that. I think in this case is that they are spending way too much time in meditation about it and causes paranoia by having intrusive thoughts. It is why the Hermit Searcher is trying to help them to see the light once more. Before we end the video of today, I have some stuff to tell you guys. I've been reading all the comments on my first video and, believe me, I'm working on that part 2 of the theory and it's getting really big. I'm so excited to show it to you. I have to say I'm taking my time on this because I'm doing a very extensive research about the human mind, architecture and yes, even the lore of the Evilius Chronicles. All I have to say is that I'm doing all I can to deliver something that the theory enjoyers deserves. Also, I read that a lot of you seems to be a little lost when it comes to the stories on Project Sekai and I really get it. The visual novel format isn't everyone's cup of tea, so I was wondering if you guys would like me to cover the most interesting or demanding stories that you guys want to see in this channel, like the stories being told by me and doing like some little PNG animations or even stills to make it even more enjoyable for all. And you can tell me about it directly because, by popular demand, I'm glad to announce that I'm opening a Discord server to get us in touch and talk about the Project Sekai and the endless theories that we can make around this amazing game. With that, it's all I have to say, I guess. If you made it to this far, I want to thank you so much for supporting me and I hope to deliver more in the future. I promise to get you videos faster than this and remember to like comment and subscribe if you haven't do that already so see you around and stay safe <laughs>